So right now I'm in a blank project file. So let's create a brand new part, just like over here, and let's actually anchor it. So scroll down and hit anchored. And so let's actually click this part, click new and add a new server script. So my goal for now is to make this block slowly transition into becoming green. So then let's go to the script. Let's delete this line. And the very first thing we need to do is access tween service. So do local tween service equals game semicolon get service tween service. In case you don't know what a service is, it's basically all of these things here. So for example, let's say players, I could do game get service players. It's just that Roblox has a lot of services and fitting them all into this explorer window would just take up too much space. And then let's add a reference to the part. So local part equals workspace. And then we'll do a wait for child part. So all you should have right now is just this part and this script. I have a test script in here, which is disabled, and I'm simply using this just to understand what I want to teach next. But again, all you need to have is just a part and a script. So how do we actually create a tween? Well, variables can actually be tweens. So we can make a variable called tween, and we'll make it equal to tween service, two dots, create, and this is where we need three things. So the very first thing is actually what we're going to be changing. So in this case, we put part. The second thing, which we don't have right now, but we will get into later, is something called tween info. So tween info determines stuff like, is it going to be repeating? How many times is it going to be repeating? How long is the tween going to play out? And so on. And the very last thing will be the goal. So this is what do we want the part to become? As you can see, it's giving us an underline because we haven't actually defined what tween info or goal is. So let's make a goal first. So we'll make a local goal. And by the way, these two have to be named the same. So if you named this goal here something else, it has to have the same name as this. And then we make it equal to two empty curly brackets. So goal has to be a table. So our goal is to turn this part from white to green. So how do we actually tell the goal that this is what we want? The way I like to think about it is think of the goal as if it were a part. So let's go to the part. So this is what we want to change. We want to change the color of the part. So then we go to goal dot color equals color three dot new. And then we'll make it, I believe it's, there we go. What we're doing here is we're making a table and we're saying, listen, the color of whatever thing is here should be this. So effectively what we're doing here is I could just remove the goal. I could put in a table and I could just say, okay, color is equal to color three dot new. This, this, that. So doing this is exactly the same as doing this. I just like doing this more because it visualizes what the goal actually is. So again, let's remove this line and replace it again with goal. So all we need right now is tween info. So I'll actually just paste this in here and I'll explain all of this. So again, similar to a goal, we're making a local tween info, new variable, and we're making it equal to tween info dot new and then two brackets. Now you don't actually have to make new lines for each thing as I have done. You could just do two comma you know, I'm using style linear, comma, this, comma, one, comma, true, and so on and so on. But this just makes it easier to read. So tween info dot new accepts six parameters. It's also worth noting that you don't actually have to have all six. So if I just had tween info dot new, and then I just had a two and that's it, then the tween would know that, okay, we want to play out for two seconds. And because it doesn't know what these are, these will just be replaced with default values. But these have to be in order. So you can't make a tween info dot new and only have the easing style. It has to be the time first, then the easing style, then direction, then repeat count, then reverses, then delay time. Now, most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Time is just how long it takes for the tween to finish. Easing style is a bit more complicated. So if I show you all of these, we have linear, bounce, elastic, circular, back, and many more. Linear just means it moves at a constant speed. So bounce in this case means it's going to bounce the color before reaching the target. So it's going to be slightly more green and then slightly more white and then slightly more green, slightly more white. So it's going to keep bouncing and bouncing until it reaches the target. And we have stuff like elastic, rubber band. We have a circular so it slows down as the tween begins finishing. We have back where it slightly overshoots the target. So it makes it slightly more green and then goes back to the green we wanted. And we have quad, sine, cubic, quart, quint, exponential. So you can click on all of these and just see what they do. But if you don't define what this is, the default will be always linear. So easing direction is a little bit more complicated as it only works if the easing style is not linear. And so easing direction has three possible options. We have out, in, and in out. So by default, it's gonna be out. And what this means is, let's say we wanted this to be bounce. 
So what easing direction does is that this bounce effect will only be applied nearing the end of the tween. If we put in, it's going to apply near the beginning of the tween. And in out, it will apply both to the beginning and the end of the tween. But again, because we're doing linear, we really don't have to worry about this. I'll just put it to out. The fourth parameter is the repeat count. And by default, it is set to zero, meaning it does once and then doesn't repeat again. If it's set to one, it's going to do it once and then repeat one more time. But then if it's less than zero, the tween will loop forever. And reverse this is also self-explanatory. So if this is true, then when our block reaches the color green, it's going to reverse back into the color white. And delay time is also fairly obvious. When we play the tween, how long of a delay is going to happen before the tween actually plays. So this is very good. So now our tween is actually fully ready. So it knows that we're going to tween the part. It knows that our goal is to get to green and it has all the info it needs. So how long it's going to be, it's going to reverse. It's going to keep looping forever. Zero delay, going to be linear. Direction is out. So now all that's left to do is play it. So tween, semicolon, play. As you can see, the tween is working. It's going from white to green back to white and back to green and it's going to keep looping like this forever now there are two more things i want to show you the first one is tween dot completed connect function double brackets enter so what this does is that when this tween is fully finishes it runs this function and runs whatever code is inside of this now with the tween we have right now because this is negative one it's actually going to keep repeating forever so this will never run so just for testing purposes I'll put this to zero so it only runs once. So then when the tween finishes, we could print something like print tween is done. So I'm loading into the game. The tween's already starting. See, it's going to white. And then now that it's done, it prints out tween is done. Now, when you're using dot completed, Roblox actually gives you a value called playback. Now, again, this is a variable, so you can name this whatever you'd like, but I just like to call it playback. And what playback is, is it's an enum.playback state. So it basically tells you if the tween has been completed successfully or if there was like some error along the way and it crashed. So for example, if I were to print out playback and then run the game. So now when the tween finishes, it prints out enum.playbackstate.completed because we had no errors and it completed successfully. And the last thing I want to show you about tweens is the concept of cancel and pause. So we can do tween pause and tween cancel so these are pretty self-explanatory pause simply pauses the tween and then play makes it resume and what cancel does is it cancels the tween and it stops it at whatever state it is currently so for example if it was like halfway to being green and it was like this like weird light green color if we were to cancel the tween it would forever be this light green color so as an example i'm gonna let it play out for half a second and then i'm gonna pause it for five seconds and so if we want to continue playing the tween from where it was paused we just do tween play and then i'll let it play out for one second and then let's see what happens so as you can see it's paused right now so it's going to be paused and it's going to resume and now it's cancelled and so it's not going to reverse and become white because we cancelled it so it's going to stay green forever and another thing to note is that because we cancelled it it never completes, so it never actually prints anything. So as with every tutorial, I'm going to have two solo challenges for you. My first challenge is that when this cube goes to green and then goes back to white, after that tween is complete, you're going to create a new tween and play that to increase or decrease the size up to you. And your second challenge is a little bit more advanced, but it involves GUI. So let's make a screen GUI. Let's add a text button. You know, we'll move it here. And so your goal is to create a local script inside of this text button, which makes a tween to change the color from white to like red or blue or whatever you want. So again, your first challenge is to take this part and then when it finishes changing the color, you change its size. And your second challenge is to make a tween to change the color of this button. So I have actually linked a copy of this project in the description. So make sure to go download that and get started on your challenges. If there's anything you still don't understand about tweening, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be sure to check it out. And once again, thank you for watching.